Um, Kazoo is currently still operating as this video goes live. They're saying that they're probably not going to last long and they're considering the fact that they're probably going to have to go into insolvency. My money is that they will not be here in 2025. Someone may step in. Maybe it'll be here in a smaller sense because someone steps in, buys it, asset strips and sells off all the physical locations and kind of restructures this and runs it in a different way. Maybe. I don't know. But Kazoo as we know it now, this car giant that's come in to step in and show us used car dealers how it's really done, is going down the toilet where it belongs, to be honest. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. You've just seen there a clip from a video that I put out about three weeks ago saying that I thought Kazoo was done. And if it wasn't, at least something was gonna change. It can't carry on the way that it is as a used car dealer. It just wasn't gonna work out. There wasn't the money there. And you may have seen now in recent days that they've come out and announced they're no longer gonna be doing car sales. They're gonna be what they call a pure play uh, online automotive marketplace. We'll get into the details of that a bit later on. But if you haven't seen the last video, it's well worth a watch. It explains a lot of the details that I don't wanna go over today. I'll quickly run through, but Kazoo, the dealership that came on and we're going to take over the car marketplace saying no one wanted to buy cars and dealership anymore. They didn't want to buy cars from sharp elbowed salesmen and the used car market was antiquated and they were going to come in and change that with their online platform. The whole idea was that it was end to end online, completely done and dusted and to make life 10 times easier. Didn't really pan out that way. They seemed to expand very quickly, got a lot of investment in through the COVID years when it really sort of suited the business. But since then, they haven't really been making the money. Uh, they've had to get lots more investment in. They've had to swap debt for shares, watering down their shares, meaning that their share price was worth absolutely nothing. Basically, if you'd invested a thousand pounds when they started up, it would now be worth uh, two pounds at the point when I made the last video. I think it's down to about one pound now. So it's lost 99.98%. I said it can't go on. They said they didn't have enough money to carry on the rest of the year. So I said something definitely is going to happen. And what's happened is they've said they're going to be this online marketplace. Uh, a lot of people are saying that, you know, they're saying they're going to rival Auto Trader. Well, actually, Kazoo hasn't said that. A lot of people are referring to an article from James Baggett, who is the editor and runs the Car Dealer magazine. Um, that's his words, not theirs, but that's what you'd expect them to do would be to try and rival the biggest name out there. Um, but yeah, the reality of that, I don't know. We'll get into that a bit further on. I think it would have been foolish of them to come out and say that they are trying to rival Auto Trader. Of course, they're going to be in the same sort of marketplace, but we don't know how they're going to do it, whether they're going to have packages like Auto Trader do, whether they're going to do it as a commission on per sale that is made through Kazoo, perhaps. And if I was them, I think they need to do it free. Why else would car dealers want to advertise with them if it wasn't for free? And perhaps they can find out some way of putting the fees onto the customer, perhaps advertising. Um, I can't see that dealers are going to want to pay to advertise with a company that's been slagging them off for the last four or five years, especially as I don't really feel like there's a huge hole in the market for that at the moment. We've got Auto Trader, we've got eBay Motors Group, there's Motors, there's AA, there's absolutely tons of advertising platforms. So yeah, I wonder if they'll start out free, but we'll get into that a bit further on in the video. So they started saying they're going to wind down their stock. Um, it makes sense. This business was struggling for cash. They just uh, swapped £600 million worth of debt for shares, watering down everyone else's shares. I mean, you wonder why anyone do a deal like that. Why, if you, someone owed you £600 million on a company that is clearly failing, and they say, well, we'll give you stock in this business, why would you do it? Well, I guess it's just the lesser of two evils, isn't it? If you think there's a chance they can convince you that they can keep that business going long enough that you might see a return, that's probably better than trying to pick the bones of the business that's left once it goes into liquidation. So I can see why they did that, but they did, still didn't have enough cash to go throughout the year because they're making losses on cars, if not very small profits. And clearly it wasn't sustainable, which I think is what I said in the last video. So it makes sense to go to something that is completely digital. Um, when they say pure play marketplace, pure play means it's a type of uh, business where it's literally just the one thing they're sticking to. They're not going to do deliveries. They're not going to do sales themselves. They are just going to be advertising for other people and making money that way, keeping it simplified, which is probably their only option at this point because the assets that they have in stock and the physical locations they have is probably the only things of real value that's going to be able to drum up some cash for them. So they're going to be more selling that off quick, getting the cash back in so they can actually keep the business turning over. They need that cash flow. There's no way they could keep the cash flow going, selling cars the way they were because it was just too expensive of a model to operate. No one else is going to invest in them. Why would you? The, the company's lost 99.99% probably at this point. 
I don't think anyone's going to want to be investing fresh money into this company. Um, so this is literally their last fight to try and keep it going, to change it into something else um, and do away with the asset heavy element of this. It's hard enough for me as a small car dealer with 50, 60 cars uh, on the forecourt. You know, that's very cash intensive. You imagine if you've got millions and millions of pounds worth, then they can get that money back in and try and funnel it into this new system that they're going to operate. Now, of course, they're going to face this as this is their new step. This is the way they go. They think this is the best option. And frankly, I think this is their only option. The whole thing absolutely reeks of desperation. Loads of jobs are going to go. You think of all the people in the prep sites, all the people in the handover sites, all the delivery drivers. Unfortunately, they're all going to be made redundant at this point. And that's of little consequence to Kazoo, I guess. You know, they, they've got to think about their investors. They're going to fire all these people who are now going to be looking for work. Hopefully, other businesses and groups can kind of absorb some of those jobs, like they have with, say, like their delivery trucks. Um, it was Car Dealer Live the other day, run by James Baggett, who owns Car Dealer Magazine. And Peter Waddell was there, the owner of the massive big motoring world. He was quite happily saying how he'd done really well out of buying a load of their delivery vehicles before, and he was hoping to sweep up the rest of them. In fact, as soon as he heard this news about Kazoo, he said that he was on the phone trying to buy their entire stock of inventory because he probably knows that he can get it for pennies on the pound at this moment because they're desperate for that cash. So, you know, hopefully the same sort of things can happen with the jobs. If these other businesses are expanding as this shrinks, Hopefully, these people will find jobs in the same sort of sector. But yeah, it comes down to reckless spending, really. It seems unfair they've given these people jobs. And I think, you know, Kazoo employees have probably been paid. I might get told wrong in the comments, and I don't know. I'm just basing this from a few uh, kind of interactions I have with people. They're paying quite well. The same, they're just happy to throw money around, basically. New sites, new vehicles, pay people good money for the jobs. But it's not very responsible if your business is actually going to end up dying, and then you just need to fire those people off because you've given them something uh, that you know they're going to depend on, and then you snatch it away again. So yeah, it's, that's what annoyed me about Kazoo, is they were there flash, they were spending money left, right, and center, getting investment in, making out that they were this great thing, when a lot of us were sitting back and thinking, that's not going to work. It just isn't going to work. And it's not fair on the people that A, have invested, B, work for you, and C, potentially have bought cars from you and no longer going to have follow-up support. What will be interesting to see is whether they stick to an online only kind of system, whether they're going to try and facilitate through their system, because now at this point, they've got a very good brand. They've got an awful lot of data of customers, whether they're going to try and be the sort of fulfilling element of allowing you to connect with the customer and deliver it to them remotely, which again, I think would be the wrong choice because that online only kind of element worked well throughout lockdown, but has slowly been dwindling off. And there's this kind of buzzword in the car trade now, which is omni-channel, which is you can reserve your car online, you can come in and test drive it, and then you can have it delivered if you want. Or you can walk onto the forecourt, find which car looks the best to you. You could go home, reserve it online, and then you could come in and pick it up. It's just got all these options. There just isn't such a place for Kazoo anymore where it's online only. They're shooting themselves in the foot by not having that ability to come and test drive and view things. Because even I, as an incredibly small dealer, and a lot of people said in a previous video, the previous video I did, that I was coming across as very bitter and whatever. I, I'm not at all because I, I don't compete with Kazoo. The type of cars they sell under three years old, not the type of cars I sell. So there's no competition there. But even me selling older, you know, higher mileage cars, I can offer you the facility to leave a deposit online. We can deliver it for you. You know, there's not much that Kazoo does that we can't do, as well as offering you the opportunity to come in, have a nice cup of coffee where you look around the car and we talk about finance options with you. So yeah, the need for them was dying off as well. So if they go for that route, I think that would be a mistake as well. One thing I heard in some of the other videos that I've heard come out since this Kazoo announcement was other YouTubers saying, this could be good news for dealers because it's competition for auto trader who are so expensive. Uh, I, just, I just think that's rubbish. I don't think it's good news for dealers whatsoever, really. There's a reason auto trader is so expensive and it's because they are massively data driven. Having gone from the magazine days, years and years ago to being online now, they haven't just got an advertising platform. They hold the most amount of data when it comes to car sales, car buying habits. They can phone me up and tell me someone was looking at your car and then they looked at, they keep going from your adverts to this dealer's advert. So that is your true competitor. Find out what they're doing and see if you can't do better. They've got data on everything. And while Kazoo has got an awful lot of data, they will have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of customers. And they've got a really great brand that they've spent a lot of money on. 
it's just not set up in the same way that auto trader is in the first place. That's why auto trader charges so much money because they get results. They can tell you what to do to make sure you're doing it as long as you listen to them. And Kazoo, even if they come in and offer things for free, still aren't going to offer all of those facilities, certainly not off the back because they're just not set up to have decades of data the way auto trader does to be able to offer the same thing. So I don't think it's going to bring auto trader prices down. I don't think that's all that important anyway. Now, I think there is someone who's going to step into the market and challenge Auto Trader and give them a run for their money, but it's certainly not going to be Kazoo. And Kazoo have chosen the absolute worst time in history to try and get into this market when Google are entering the market with their new Google vehicle ads. Now, no one's got more data than Google. Google knows exactly what times I open my eyes this morning and what brand of tea I'm drinking. They have got the most amount of data probably in the entire world, and they also have a huge amount of data on buying habits, things like that. So I think with Google entering the market, bringing with them an absolute ton of data, they've done this system before in America, and they're now bringing it to the UK. Auto Trader being, you know, the absolute marquee name when it comes to advertising cars and having the most amount of data. I honestly do not think Kazoo stands one chance whatsoever. And if they're relying on used car dealers coming and handing money to them to advertise with them, they're completely doomed. In fact, talking of James Baggett in the Car Dealer magazine and his Car Dealer Live event, uh, I'm certain I heard him say that he asked at the event after this news came out on the same day, would anyone consider advertising with Kazoo? And not one hand went up in a room of hundreds. So one thing I'll ask you is, are they needed? Do we have them at the moment? No, we don't. Do we really need someone like Kazoo coming in and advertising our cars for us? Or are we surviving as we are? are could other platforms really quickly, much faster than them, adapt to any changes or new things they bring in. Auto Trader could do it. Google could do it. They're just, they're completely doomed. And I understand the way they're doing this. They're stripping out the cash. They're trying to keep it going for as long as they can because the whole thing's been a facade, if you ask me. Um, and that's not knocking the company and the customer service. There are quite a few people getting really upset in the comments that I had a great car from them and the service was great. And they offer me £2,000 more for my car in part exchange than we buy any car would or you would. or And I managed to get the car cheaper. That's great. But listen to what you're saying. That isn't a business model. That isn't going to last. Their employees aren't going to have a job. I'm sure they're great and their customer service was wonderful. It's easy to be great when you're just throwing money at it with no comeback whatsoever. Um, but unfortunately, you know, the chickens are coming home to roost. They can't keep it up forever. So my personal feeling is um, I feel like car dealers should vote with their feet, really. No matter what Kazoo's offering, uh, even if it's free, do we really need it? Do we really want to be advertising with this company who've basically criticized the whole market uh, and then are turning around to say, could we have some money off you? It just, it just seems ridiculous. And I think the sooner we move away from this idea that online only sales are the future, clearly they're not. Same as EVs potentially are not the be all and end all answer to motoring, the better. Anyway, that was just my view on what's happening with the kazoo. Um, I know loads of other people have done videos, but I thought I'd get my bits out there. Some things that we talked about before, the things that I hadn't seen mentioned in other videos. So I thought we'd have a have a talk about it. I still don't think they're going to be hanging around very long, to be honest. Don't forget, if you'd like a cheap car, you can enter my raffle to win my Mercedes SL500. It's a five liter V8 convertible. It sounds absolutely awesome. The link for the raffle will be in the description. It's just two pounds to enter. There's less than a week left to go. There's huge bundle offers as well. So if you buy a bundle, you can get up to 40 tickets for free. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and you'll see more videos like this as well as the raffle being announced. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.